This is the Insomniacs Anonymous Podcast. Side effects may include excessive word vomit and getting good. Today on the podcast, we talk about the Twitch horror game being developed by a YouTuber Kricken called ICU. We go over the Overwatch leaks, including Sombra. We have some updates on our website to tell you about, and Dude has some things to say about how his charity stream went. Also, Black Desert Online might be an okay game. Stick around, it's sure to be a good one. Hello, everybody, my Dude, name is Dude. You up the recording today. Yes, I did. <laughs> Hello, everybody, my name is Dude. Welcome to the Insomniac Anonymous podcast. It is October 11th, 2016. We're on episode 22 now. A drinking. That time we gave we gave the podcast alcohol. Word uh, vomit. Yeah, <laughs> it, yeah, it did not go well. <laughs> I'm joined by my good buddy Shro, who is mad at me currently because I fucked up the recording. <laughs> not actually mad at you, but okay. I am going to give you shit for it because it's funny. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you guys uh, have to try really hard to make me mad. Okay. Okay. I think you've only successfully done that once. <laughs> Have we done that, or has like that just ever happened once? Um, as an IA related thing. Oh, okay. There's one thing I that comes to mind that I remember really pissing me off. But was we're not here to we... talk about those things. Was that when we gave you shit for having a franking computer for eleven months? No, that that oh. was just irritating. Oh, okay. <laughs> Damn. And so, I came up with my own revenge for that one, and I called everything the device, and Squall <laughs> lost his mind. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, how have you been, Shro, and what have you been up to? Um, so my mind has been everywhere, at least yesterday. Like, um, I got the house to myself for the weekend, which is an extraordinarily rare occurrence, um, just because of the, my family situation and how that's working out right now. Um, but my father had his uh, college reunion. What, is, what would that make that like? 30 years, I think, or something. Um, I don't know, something around there. And he, uh, his buddies were actually going. And uh, he decided to go for once. He doesn't normally like to go to the big public events these days for fairly obvious reasons of, you know, just self-respect. But, um... So, yeah, he decided to go, and apparently they had a great time, and um, they being him and my mother and their friends. So, but yeah, I got the house to myself, me and my puppy dog hung out, and it was a good time. And then they got back on Sunday, and my brain has been a little, like, schizo crazy ever since then. Which, at least, I guess, <laughs> I shouldn't say schizo, because I'm about to say it's actually ADD, which is a completely different thing. Um, but... I just cannot focus right now. I'm just flitting from task to task, like every two, five minutes, something like that. Even in games, I was sitting there like, oh yeah, let's uh, let's go do this quest. I'll kill this thing, kill this thing. Um, Okay, right, you're right, the quest. Uh, um, okay, grab a thing here. We take it to this person. Oh, what's in my inventory? Can I can I salvage that? Yeah, I can salvage that. Okay. Oh, fuck, I can't salvage. Okay, I just got to sell that one. Oh, shit, the quest. Yeah, we need to, oh, fuck. Yeah, someone started. Yeah, go this way. And I'm just like, whoa. Whoa, brain, brain! You need to like short sort your shit out. <laughs> and then we took somebody to the Aetherblade jumping puzzle in Guild yeah. Wars, and that, <laughs> that probably added more to it. Yeah, a little bit. By the way, sorry, Thacker. Yeah, really. <laughs> um, I actually did manage to make it to the uh, almost top of that jumping puzzle. Um right after you guys left and then you guys said something and I wiggled my mouse as I was on one of those launching gears and oh, it, God. Promptly, it promptly launched me under the platform that I was aiming for and I just went hurtling to my death <laughs> from <laughs> God knows how many meters in the air. That was well above the ship. I don't know that much. Oh, God. So, yeah, still one of my favorite puzzles, though. But, um, yeah, so, 
we got a decent list going today. I think oh, we yes. got some good information. I know I at least one person. Shro for one part though, because there's one that thing that just says sci-fi. Oh yeah, that's true. That's uh, <laughs> sorry, Shro. <laughs> that's a thing that I uh, might have to figure out. No, I know exactly what that okay. is. We love sci-fi here at IA. I can actually. I mean, we can segue right into that one because yeah. that's just a stupid thing Shro's been doing. Uh, I've been having sci-fi binging um, as part of a way to cope with my inability to focus. Um, so some Battlestar Galactica, I actually watched old school Battlestar Galactica with my mother <laughs> Sunday night, um, like the original one from 1978. Um, I've been watching the beginning of, uh, Deep Space Nine now, cause I watched a lot of Deep Space Nine and Voyager and all that stuff when I was a kid growing up, um, mostly as reruns cause I was probably in my young teens at that point and those shows were from basically when i was a toddler so but uh i because they were reruns i never really understood the overarching stories that were going on because they were all from different random episodes so i'm actually watching it in order now and kind of putting things together so it's kind of cool i've been doing that with a few things to read too it's like oh my god i like totally didn't understand that this was about boinking when i was a kid I get it now. Boinking? Old, old classic books. Fucking. Oh. Okay. Never never heard somebody use the word boinking? No. God damn it. My vocabulary is pretty much fuck shit, piss, ass, wanker, cunt. I, I'm I could go down the list, but I, I think we shouldn't. I kind of want you to just somehow hold a conversation using only those words. <laughs> that's your vocabulary. I feel like... Have I feel to, that would like, be like, question hysterical. Answer kind of thing. It'd have to Especially be like... if it was like your parents or something. And oh, you just, God. Like, just candidly record them. Like, dude, run, why did you not clean the stove after you were done with it? Fuck! Fuck shit! <laughs> that can be like the swears of me forgetting to do it. Anywho. Oh boy. See, we're gonna, I, I can already tell I'm gonna sidetrack through this podcast like fucking bolt of lightning. And I'm gonna have to pull you back into it because we got a time frame. Yep. So, what you're saying is you gotta put me on a leash? Kind yes, yes, of. please, please. Okay. You're gonna tug it hard? Yeah, boy. Maybe. Uh -huh. Maybe if you go a little far away. Or if you go for that fire hydrant again. But it's so shiny. It's rusty. It's not shiny at all. It's shiny after I pee on it. Only after you pee on it. But right now it is rusty. And oh my. very, very ugly. In fact, the fire department it, needs to replace it that. It could be a rusty trombone. No, rusty no, okay. tromboner. Oh my! Hey, so, spe speaking of rusty, terrible instruments, <laughs> tell me about this ICU horror game. Uh, ICU is a interactive horror game for streamers specifically. Uh, the streamer okay. plays through the game through the this level. And the viewers get to decide on what kind of thing the view the streamer has to deal with. This is made by a YouTuber named Kricken or Kriken. I I don't know how to pronounce his name. I'm sorry, but this was on Kickstarter for literally a day before it got completely funded. I don't know when this Holy is going to be released. Shit. Oh yeah, I'm amazed too. <laughs> but at the same time, not because yeah. he's a pretty popular YouTuber, so. Oh, okay, yeah, so he's got a fan base. Oh, hell yeah. It looks really, really good, and it looks to be kind of like a weeping angel kind of monster, where if you're not looking at it, he moves, but if you're close enough to him, he moves anyway. So, you seem to be in a game show-like setting, announcer and everything, and you... I think you go through a forest. I'm not sure. Maybe it changes per level, but it looks pretty interesting so far. Some of the things you can deal with from the viewers are uh, drunk 
style like viewpoint so your vision's all blurry and shaky and maybe a little warped even and one is where you're like super tiny you have to run to different shacks and your viewers will vote on whatever you happen to deal with for that per the next particular segment you're going through it looks really good and I'm gonna have to link that somewhere as far as I know, the Kickstarter is still going. Hmm. And we'll continue going on. Oh, wait, no, I didn't type in the game part. I just typed in ICU, so I got the medical thing. There we go. 20 days left to go, and it's overfunded. Hey, I mean, those are good times to have. I've, uh... I've been watching some stuff from Double Fine Productions again, which they did um, Broken Age. They're the creators of the very famous Psychonauts game oh, yeah. and Day of the Tentacle. And um, they've been, they originally, I think, had their YouTube account. I think they had it before this, but they it became a famous account when they did the whole documentary with the creation of Brogan Age which again I put down as if you haven't seen that and you're remotely interested in gaming especially from a development standpoint please please go spend the seven and a half something hours of time to go watch this crazy in-depth documentary of them building this game literally before they knew what the game was even going to be about or called um, it's absolutely transparent and awesome and anyways they have been updating their youtube channel now with some new stuff about new games they've been launching and uh new things going on including the fact that if you had not somehow heard psychonauts 2 was funded like i think that was almost a year ago now uh as a a crowdfunding thing on a new platform called fig um, which is a crowdfunding idea where you can norm do the normal Kickstarter crowdfunding thing. Um, the company themselves plan on pumping in money to the project that gets into it. And then um, there's, quote, the FIG investment that also happens, which is the new idea. And when they first did this, I didn't even actually quite understand what was going on because it was something I found at 2 in the morning, and I was like, what? Um, but the idea is that you can have people with a lot of money and even other companies, publishers and whatnot, that would think this might be a good idea, a good project. They back at an investment level and get basically share rights to the product shares kind of an idea. So you, they give fig thousands of dollars they enter into an investment agreement with the company and then when the product is shipped and launched based on the sales and how well it does the people that invested it into the company then get money back so they could make a profit off of it like a publisher would hmm. so that's really kind of cool um, but yeah, they, they've released some videos talking about that and talking about how they've been doing, uh, with Psychonauts 2. There's already, um, a video of them doing a demo for the Unreal 4 engine that they're using and them having built some assets for it, uh, with powers that Raz will have, including the ability, uh, to clone himself, uh -huh. which is... He has psychic clones now, so that's going to be really cool. Um, so yeah, totally go go check out Double Fine stuff. Um, why did I go on this tangent about Double Fine? I don't remember. I don't know, but it was kind of neat. Okay, well, I mean, hey, cool gaming news, right? Um, oh, yeah. We were talking about Kickstarter... Oh, yeah, we were yeah. talking about Kickstarter, so maybe it was, like, funding yeah. or something is what the... Yeah. Yeah. That's really um, all I had to say about ICU, anyway. Uh, 
Their current stretch goal they're at is the green room, which includes audience participation, preparation lobby, my bad, monster selection showcase, so they're going to have more monsters, maybe, a flashlight training room, Sweet. is apparently the flashlight is a weapon. Training. Yeah. Apparently the flashlight That's acts amazing. as a weapon for some monsters, or all of them, I don't know. Live oh, contestant leaderboards, so there's a leaderboard for every player. And level objectives and lore, so get a little bit of lore now. Interesting. It kind of is. It's is it virtual reality or is it just a normal game? Normal game. I it could may totally have see VR it being a virtual though. reality. It might have VR support someday, or maybe that's down the line on stretch goals. But for now, it's just like a standard FPS with mouse and keyboard. Maybe with controller. I don't know. But anyway. So, I think what I was trying to say was the Kickstarter idea of just uh, getting things in and that I'm seeing stuff with that, you know, improving more and more with n more games getting cool Kickstarter stuff funding. So, in fact, I think that game we were talking about, um, Secret Legend, that's like all got a different language and was one of the other PAX games that was super cool. Yeah. Um, I think that had a crowdfunding source to it as well. That's cool. I don't know, I'd have to look that up. Um, speaking of more Kickstarter stuff and crowdfunding, I, I'm working backwards through my Night in the Woods emails uh, since we talked about that last week. And um, I actually found the answer to one of my own questions of them, like, Oh, that's a thing that I don't know what that's about. It's probably in a previous email. Well, it turns out it was. Um, it Normally, when you make a mini game in a game that's got a lot of work to it, you start to wonder how much of that was, um, you know, deviated from the actual game. Like uh, the new Deus Ex that released, Deus Ex Mankind Divided, has an extremely fleshed out, uh, mini game that's part of the hacking aspect of the game where you kind of I guess take on this like digital polygon avatar and you go around these 3D virtual mazes filled with you know quote security polygons sort of things and try to get to the main server and back to your finish line quick as you can um and there's a bunch of different upgrades and ways to do it and there's a leaderboard you can do it in the fastest time against other players in the game even though it's a single player game so that's kind of weird um they they put a lot of time and polish into this and for a game that has otherwise as mankind divided as a whole has very hit the lukewarm kind of reception and it was very short and that kind of an issue it makes me sit there and wonder like okay guys why did you spend so much time on this mini game when clearly the actual game needed more time well so night in the woods has done a similar idea i don't know to what extent because i can't play it i haven't seen it um but I'm actually going to defend their use of it here rather than harp on them. Because apparently May's computer, May being the main character that you play in Night in the Woods, has a game on it called Demon Tower. And you can play this game when you're on May's computer because you can actually do things on May's computer. Because it's, you know, interactive narrative game and you can actually interact with the narrative in the computer. So little uh, Inception kind of style there. But yeah, you can totally play a game while you're in the game. And apparently it is well thought out enough that you'll be, it It seems kind of like some sort of D&D &D dungeon crawler in tower format. Hmm. But um, you will be able to like create like a, basic avatar kind of an idea and i mean it's all like pixel art so they didn't like spend a huge amount of media asset time on it um side scroller thing and 
you know, basically do a dungeon crawler. I think you can even save it and come back to it later. Like it's fleshed out enough to do that. But I think it's just like, a, you know, increasing level counter. So, but I actually think that fits really well with the character they're trying to do with May and the story and what they're trying to do with this game. The fact that you can totally lose yourself in some stupid mini game for some untold hours in this game. I think that totally fits on board with this whole game that they're producing Night in the Woods. Um, whereas it seemed like a strange tacked on feature in something like Mankind Divided. I guess it'd be like if one of the mini games in like Mario Party was obscenely long and had a save status or something. It'd be like, what am I doing? Why am I doing this? So, so yeah, that, that was my night in the woods information. Is there's Demon Tower, which is a totally interesting looking mini game. I look forward to playing that when I can. <laughs> and since we were talking about hacking mini games, I, I, and readers, viewers, whatever the hell you call yourselves, listeners, um, insomniacs, plan, yeah, we don't plan any of the cuts from topic to topic it's all improv and somehow i'm just on a roll today um Yay. so if that's not completely apparent i also just realized that i said um and i'm really mad at myself for it but anyways hacking mini games dude run let's talk about uh something that the crazy arg players in overwatch did they uh hacked a blizzard employee only website for specifically Russian hackers, and I hate blaming them for it, but Russian hackers hacked into a Blizzard employee network that had information on Sombra and a couple of new game modes that are coming soon to Overwatch, probably on the 16th of October. But Sombra has been leaked, she looks like Skrillex, and uh, there may be Shake a... Shake my Skrillex hand! Shake my Skrillex hand! <laughs> I'm not even kidding, she does look like Skrillex. Really? Yeah. Wait, is that actually the the chick that had yeah. a sniper rifle in the bottom of that article? Uh, that wasn't a sniper rifle. Wait, yeah, that was her actually. She had an Uzi in the uh, picture. I don't know if she has a sniper rifle or not in the game. Huh. But yeah, she's purple Skrillex from Spain, and uh, yeah, she's a hacker. And I'm kind of glad the over the ARG community kind of did hack it because I'm still pissed at Blizzard for taking that as long as they did with everything. I'm still pissed about the waiting games. I was actually wondering if it was out because everybody was getting pissed to the point where it was showing up in our podcast. And not that Blizzard's listening to our podcast, but if we're saying it, then clearly somebody with more clout is saying it. <laughs> and nope. Blizzard's probably like, Guys, we should probably push this out. <laughs> We're making people angry. <laughs> no, they didn't. Uh, they didn't have anything to do with it. Just people randomly hacked them no. and said, "Like, oh, hey, here's this information on Sombra we found." And yeah, that was it. There's also probably hmm. a horde mode coming out, similar to how Man vs. Machine works in TF2, maybe. So that kind of thing. Interesting. Looking forward to that. Uh, Oh, the pre-patch is live now, so log into Battle.net to probably get that when it goes live. And there's also some new maps coming soon, probably for the Horde mode, maybe just some different kind of game modes in general. And more heroes are definitely on the way. Though Sombra is the first one to come, I'm sure. And there's a comic out now. Or, not now, but Ooh. coming. I'm wrong, I'm wrong. There's a comic coming soon. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. My words are going vomity. Uh, there's a comic coming soon for Overwatch. It's a Halloween-themed Junkrat comic called Junkins... I forget. It involves Dr. Junkenstein, so I'm sure it's a Frankenstein's monster parody with Overwatch characters. And Junkrat is the monster, apparently. Roadhog. Roadhog is the monster. Fuck, I'm sorry. <laughs> words, 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 words. Today, Dude okay. Run learns the English language. When have I never... When have I started learning? <laughs> <laughs> when have I started learning this language? 
I don't know. Started man. learning any Shit's language. Whack. Fucking hell. People on YouTube know that I'm bad at like at English. At every at my native tongue. Okay. <laughs> I was saying you're just making this worse. So I know. I'm just kind of letting you go. <laughs> I know. I, I I'm bad at it. I, this is not news. So we you certainly don't need any help shoving your foot in your mouth. Yep. Hey, it happens to the best of us. No. Just me. <laughs> just you. Just me. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were I thought you were humming something else. I thought you were humming the Imperial March. Yeah. And now we're gonna get sued by LucasArts. <laughs> I've played that several times, actually, with an instrument. It's quite fun. Huh. I also saw the Cleveland Orchestra play it, which was even more fun. I have to listen Cleveland to that Cleveland Orchestra sometime. is world famous, and huh. they're, you know, by me, because Cleveland... I, yeah, I don't know how Cleveland has a world famous orchestra, but we've had one for many decades, and we're those of us that remember that it exists are very proud of that. But uh, you remember that it exists or that it exists? Both. Oh, okay, good. Yeah. Because there are plenty of people you could go to in Cleveland and be like, yeah, the Cleveland Orchestra. We've got an orchestra. Where did they go? Um, never mind. I'm going to walk away slowly. <laughs> if I go to Cleveland, I'm going to have to start saying that, aren't I? So how about that Cleveland Orchestra? Uh... <laughs> no, right now what you want to say is how about them Indians? The Windians! Uh, I don't get it. Yeah, uh, the, the Cleveland Indians baseball team is pretty much dominating the series right now. Oh, sports. I don't follow sports. Yeah, sports. I don't follow sports, sports. ball. You'll be good at them. All right, I'm making every reference in the world right now, and they're so fucking obscure, I don't even know what to call them. Uh, okay, well, at least you're having fun. Yep. Um, that was about all we had for Overwatch. I'm sure if Brian were here, we'd be gushing Tim over it. Eric but, awesome uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, but Brian's incapacitated, or in real life, I don't know. Reina, Marina, Feldina, Starolina, Carolina. I don't get it. I, I mean, it just popped into my head after we still have him in the, the notes as Bryna. Oh, along yeah. With, along with Shrek and Dodo. Oh, yeah, we still have the names on the... That way, right? Yep. No, that's actually a reference to the Lion King like straight to DVD movie, the one and a half, that's like Timon and Pumbaa's version of the original movie. I never we, saw that. Some of that. Yeah, it's it's super silly. I I mean it's worth a watch. I, I wouldn't say that it's bad, but it's very different from <laughs> The Lion King. It it's okay, so it's kind of like if MS three TK were Timon and Pumbaa and watched The Lion King. Huh. <laughs> That's well, all right, then. <laughs> like the movie literally starts and cuts out to being as part of a theater audience at several times with Timon and Pumbaa and other characters watching The Lion King and providing strange segue commentary to the movie to other scenes that you know are new and were never told about the line like timon's origin story and pumbaa's origin story and all that oh. kind of stuff but it's so left field many people try to pretend it doesn't exist but no the, the reference i'm trying to make is that at one point timon serenades um shenzi the hyena that's whoopi goldberg and Apparently, Shenzi's full name is Shenzi Marie Feltoda. Yeah, damn it, I can't say it fast. Shenzi Marie Feltoda Baldetta Jacqueline Hyena. Well, all right then. 
Gesundheit. Yeah. And, and all of the hyenas have that reaction too. He called you what? <laughs> so I don't know why. I literally remember almost. No okay, no, I actually probably remember more than that movie. I should, but because um, bad furry. But um, but yeah, no, that's that's the point in that movie that sticks out. And for some reason, Bryna made me think of it, and that's how we got there. Congratulations! Sure, I wasted two minutes trying to explain this joke at least. <laughs> wow! I should just have that soundbite on standby. Yeah, we I? should. Okay, I'm and getting the worst it ready. Part is, is that I associate that violin solo with a Christmas song from Mannheim Steamroller, and it's actually from a Korean. Soap opera, and huh. is like literally called the sad violin theme, except that it's it's actually not supposed to be sad. I guess it's like the difference between Korean culture and Western culture is that like a it's supposed to be a very sweet romantic song where your passion pours out for these two lovers in this this beautiful romantic TV bullshit. And, and then remixes like this come out. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> and you did. Yep. So, um, but yeah, uh, Western culture has decided that's like a super sad and pathetic song. <laughs> it's perfect so, for sad moments, though. It really is. And I think it's got something to do with the key if you want to go really music nerd on it. But let's not yeah. do that. Um, so we only have in, about, I don't know, an hour and, not another, like 45 more minutes, maybe. Okay. I'm going to say 45 more minutes of recording, maybe, at at max. Well, I anyway. was going to say we we nerd out with some pen and paper games. Yeah, that'd be good, too. Man Henderson. Yes, let's nerd out with old man Henderson. And so, then give it a little more crazy after hearing it, because, yes. Pretty much. So, um, if you're just joining us, Old Man Henderson is a character in a game of Call of Cthulhu, which is a D&D-esque pen and paper game that focuses on Lovecraftian lore, Cthulhu, the Elder Gods, the Realm of Relay, um, all that kind of good stuff. And pretty much everybody dies. And... You're going to die by either going crazy or being killed by somebody that goes crazy or just by the cultists and the elder gods themselves. Um, and that's fine. But all games, regardless of what system, universe, or whatever they're running in, require you having a good GM or, you know, your game master, dungeon master, whatever you want to call them. And the players that played with Old Man Henderson did not have one of those. And so one of the players who, importantly, I actually didn't know this before this segment, um, goes by the, um, not acronym, alias, goes by the name alias Waffle House Millionaire. So for all of you that have been listening, the player that created Old Man Henderson is known as Waffle House Millionaire, also known as WHM, for the uh, rest of this. Actually, dude, uh, give me an opinion here. Do you think it's smarter and easier to just refer to him as Waffle House Millionaire for the entire thing as I read this, or do you want me to, or should I say WHM? I'm Waffle House, so we can probably get sued by Waffle House. <laughs> Fair enough. Waffle House it is. That's easier to say anyways. Yeah. Um... So yeah, here I'm known as Waffle House as the actual player and Old Man Henderson as Old Man Henderson. Um, they didn't have a good GM, and so Old Man Henderson was created with a game-breaking level of background detail that allowed the player to pretty much retcon anything and do anything. Um, and somehow he made it work and got it to work, and so you got all these crazy fucking stories 
about how Old Man Henderson won Call of Cthulhu because in the end he was able to kill an elder god, which isn't really supposed to be possible, but he did it. <laughs> and so, yeah. We're now at Director's Cut Part 1. There are four of them, and we're only going to read Part 1 today. Director's Cut is actually provided from not Waffle House, but from one of the other players in the group who was, upon hearing about Old Man Henderson's exploits being leaked to the internet, found them and proceeded to go, yeah, no, all this shit is fucking real. And I'm kind of sad because he skipped some of the funnier details um, about how all this shit came to be. And I liked a story mode. So in kind of a shro extra detail sort of way, this other player known as... Um, a self-called ca- nowhere? Yeah, I would say he just ca- calls himself a self-called nowhere. Um, I'm going to call him nowhere. And hopefully that doesn't get confusing. Okay. But, um, so yeah, this other player from the same game uh, steps in to provide extra details on Old Man Henderson. And that's where we're at, is his accounting of what was going on. So, Director's Cut Part 1. Waffle House tends to get emotionally attached to a well-made character. To him, they're the means of exploring a story. A good story is something he thinks the very foundations of modern society are based on. He doesn't mind a, quote, bad end, end quote, so long as it's legitimate and, you know, well thought out. Botched a role at a bad time? Shit happens. Bad choice, in, but you were in character about that bad choice? Okay, it's meant to be. Simply screwed up by circumstance? Them's the shakes, bro. Law, you're dead because you actually disagreed with my self-insert fetish fuel character with two katanas? I actually had to stop him from choking the fat bastard that was our GM. Which might make him sound like a bad person ruled by petty emotion, but the truth is he's like a bear. He's normally quite chill. Not that quite easy, or not that easy to uh, piss off normally. So he doesn't really move often, but when he does, well, things like Henderson happen. It was the fifth game, or fifth session of the game with a quote, experienced GM using Trail of Cthulhu, a small distinction on the whole, but one worth mentioning in my eyes. So it, it's a subsystem of Call of Cthulhu. And he'd already lost three characters to the stupidest shit. Seriously, the last one was some evil force put a curse on him, and he ended up being killed by a horse falling out of an airplane. Yeah. So the GM goes to grab pizza, since it was his turn to pay for the pizza, and I could feel the room cooling slightly. Waffle House's expression never changed. He never looked at me or the other two guys playing. I know you're thinking about leaving, he said, but I want you to stay. I want you to watch what I'm going to do. I knew this was bad from the start, because while he can get frustrated mad, which is hilarious, by the way. He makes a little choking noise on the back of his throat like a murloc caught in a trash compactor. When he gets truly pissed, he's calm. Kind of like Shro. I'm throwing that in there. We continue for the evening, and about a week later, we come back. He's giving me a ride, and he looks like he hasn't slept in two days. And the stubble is almost, but not quite, into gangly half-beard territory. I've done something. I'm not sure it's a good thing yet, he says as he hands me the little binder thing he keeps his character sheets in and notes in it. You've done something? I ask, as I take the folder from him. I created? No, created is the wrong term. I feel it was already there, waiting for me to give it life. I put a thing on paper, and I'm bringing it down on that fat fuck like a wrath of God. Uh Uh-huh. I say as I look at the sheet. Is Henderson his first or last name? I don't even fucking know, man. So then, I look at the stack of paper he called a backstory. I start reading it, and I'm immediately fascinated by what can only be called a tome of madness. 
it switched perspectives and tone wildly. At one point, it's written with stage directions in the form of a script. At one point, it went to German. I know for fact he only knows like two words in German. Well, I'm kind of fluent. The German was in his hand, and it was grammatically flawless. I find my voice. What? Been asking that myself all fucking day, man. <laughs> so we get to the game, and the GM asks what we're all doing. Detective guy's drinking alone at his desk, waiting for one of his contacts to get back to him. Jimmy the jock type is struggling with math homework. Big surprise. My character, Professor Filkins, is grading midterms. Then we get to the introduction to Henderson. He's sitting in a lawn chair in his house, smoking a bong, staring at a wall he painted to look like a Hawaiian beach. You know, Rupert, he addresses the stuffed parrot currently resting on the arm of his chair. You're a good friend. Most people would have asked for a hit, but you know how much I love this shit. Way better than what we had back in Nam. He chuckles and then re begins reminiscing. You know, I still remember the first time I got high. Back of my older brother's van. No, it must have been some good shit, too. Because I'm an only child. Ain't that right, Childs? He looks over to an empty corner of the room. Charlie. He then gets up mildly concerned. Man, what the hell? He begins to search the house in earnest before sitting down a on a chair in his kitchen. Where the fuck are my lawn gnomes? I mean, did somebody steal them? Who the fuck would steal them? Yeah, they're worth a lot. Okay. All right, come on. He then pulls out a Sharpie and begins, begins to scribble on the table. All right, 215 gnomes, total weight about 800 pounds. Total value approaching 4,000 or 40,000. Not a one-man job. Need help to carry them. Need help to sell them. I'm looking at a well, large, organized group of assholes. He looks into the middle distance. Like those guys down the street? They're Mormons, right? Large religious group? Come around here in the early morning like those damned Charlies? Roops. I think we've got a lead. And then he poured a bottle of Jack Daniels in a large go-cup and went and got in his car. Before I get back to the rest of the party, it... Should be noted that Henderson looked a lot like Jeff Bridges of today. So imagine all of his lines in that voice. I can't do a Jeff Bridges voice. I'm not going to try. Because that's the voice we were treated to at the table. Anyway, I've had the lead on a cult for... or the, I've had a lead on a cult meeting for a while. And I managed to get an invite. I'm sitting in the front row listening to a passionate Arab man. Talking about how there's more to the world than we know. This myself, I'm intrigued. Jimmy is sitting outside thinking about his friends, trying to decide if he should go in and talk to them or what. The detective's gotten his call back and now watching the scene with interest. A battered 92 Buick Century fails to get their attention until it suddenly executes a perfect handbrake turn and parks at the curb. Back to Henderson's point of view. He's blasting Creedence Clearwater Revival when suddenly he sniffs the air and says, Mormons, before whipping around and parking out front and killing the car. <laughs> he then gets out, out of the car and pops the trunk. In full view of the detective, he then shoves Lurid Lucy, an inflatable sex toy of exceptional quality, to one side and pulls out some sort of Israeli-made combat shotgun and starts walking towards the house. He then kicks open the door while all our mouths are agape and shouts the words that let us know the game would never, truly ever be the same. Muckle me damned cultist, are you never he's keeping me wee men? <laughs> so at this point, the GM has not yet realized what Henderson is. In fact, I think I'm the only one who truly understood what was about to happen to existential horror at, at this point in time. Here's another fun fact about Waffle House. When he's at a game table with a character sheet, you're not at a table with him. You're at the table with whatever character he's playing until further notice. I don't think he could have metagamed if he tried, i.e. to play the game with player knowledge rather than character knowledge. For instance, 
you know somebody else in your party is going down even though your character is you know 10 miles away from them and has no idea so anyway the gm has decided to regain control the only way he knows how by killing mike's latest character via bullshit and summons a shoggoth henderson having passed the will check to not puke up his brains and winning the initiative meaning he gets to attack first comments on how it's the ugliest fucking poodle ever oh god and then shoots it in the fucking face until it dies then he shoots the cultist guy who summoned it then he shoots me then a random guy then he pisses on the shagath's corpse since everyone else is too busy losing their shit in a panic over the creature that should not be being summoned and casually sets the tapestry on fire with a cigar as he walks out the door <laughs> So then, everyone still alive runs the fuck away from the burning building before the cops show up. Henderson makes it home about three blocks away when he realizes something horrible. He totally fucking forgot about the lawn gnomes. He runs back to the burning building, only to see the fire department has already arrived. They informed him that no gnomes were in the building that they can tell. On the other... On the one hand, he's relieved as fuck since he didn't lose the gnomes and killing that many little people would probably constitute a hate crime. Never mind that he totally just leveled a church with the speed and brutality of the fucking Spetsnaz. Anyway, he goes to try and cook up where they could have gone at the local pub. The GM at this point looks up at him from his notes. He's clearly been so or been thrown so far off the fucking tracks by what just happened that he can't just improv his way out of it. I I think I need a minute. Or ten. He amscrays, and I took over I look over to the man I thought I knew. He he has his cell phone out and is asking if we're cool with Chinese food since we had pizza last week. What the fuck was that? asks one of our fellow players. Remember when I said I was getting revenge? I brought out the big guns. I don't even have the small guns anymore. I was given some once, and I promptly returned them. Won't be needing these, I said. Hello? Chinese food place I forget the name of? You still got that special on the shrimp fried rice? That is Director's Cut Part 1. These are very lengthy, and I think Part 4 is the longest. Yeah, we might split some of it in. I don't know. I think they're absolutely fucking brilliant and worth it. Oh, yeah. I, I would listen to the entirety of part four in one sitting. So, um, yeah, that was your old man Henderson detour for the middle of it. Um, I'm going to give you another quick detour as I am a supporter of and big fan of the YouTube group and studio um, known as Corridor Digital. Um, they started out as visual effects guys and then started making cool gaming related nerdy visual effects based videos on youtube that caught on like wildfire and now they're making some professional stuff too now and a uh, long story short they got an offer worked out to make a movie about battlefield you know the actual modern day game about modern day war combat and so it's a live action film. It's on a website called Go90, literally the letters G O 90. I know those last two are numbers, don't correct me. And um, just go to go90.com or deep.ca, Google it, and then look up Battlefield. We'll try to provide a link in the, the video. But um, they're releasing it in 10-minute clips at the moment. And then I think they're then going to release the full feature-length thing later. Um, but yeah, it's their first full feature-length kind of... Uh, and I don't want to say video, because it is really kind of a movie. It's totally in the Battlefield universe with live action. And... It's all of the level of quality and understanding of gaming that Sam and Nico, the main two guys, and his their team put into all of their normal videos, but in movie format, and it's great. And you guys should watch it if you like video game-based movies. 
And I'm not talking like 1970s kind of video game based movies, though those are fun in their own way. Hi, Tron. I'm looking at you. Hi, Mortal Kombat. Also looking at you. Yeah, that that's. Yeah, I think that was 80s. That's okay. very, yeah, that, that had to be 80s. Still counts, though, because that was hilarious. To be honest, I'm pretty sure Tron is actually 80s, too. Yeah, in fact, I'm very certain of that now that I said it out loud. So, um, yeah. Oh, another thing that I've been working on is I, I got a lot of shit to post to the website um, as far as just general content from Shro the Cat rather than Shro the Admin. Um, and when we were playing with some new people in Guild Wars 2 last night, it reminded me to look up some screenshots. And I've now realized I have a lot more screenshots in Guild Wars 2 than I thought. And furthermore, um, I remembered that the screenshot button in Guild Wars 2 exists. Um, but yeah, I have some silly Guild Wars 2 screenshots I really need to <laughs> post on Imager and then link over to the website. Including Fat Chaba, which I guess is a... I don't know, I think I find it funnier than anybody else does that I've shown it to you so far. Somebody had a box of fun in World vs. World, and it had the uh, gigantic potion on it. And our uh, commander that night was one of the only people that had an effect on, on it when I took the shot. So there's just a picture of her on a little tiny boat that is like the size <laughs> of one of her feet. And there's like the rest of the squad in the boat. And somebody out from the docks in the background just does a text box over their head because Guild Wars 2 check or Guild Wars 2 text chat for this kind of shit is just hilarious. And all it says is, Chaba, you're fat. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that this morning and I just fucking started dying. I tried to show it to my lady friend and she's like, okay, I'm going to go to bed now. <laughs> like all right <laughs> so yeah i have silly screenshots to share and since i'm talking about ia stuff um i've been looking into some other things for us again more background things i think i'm almost set in ia having their own official legitimate bank account instead of a fake one or fake one that is made up in the middle of canada somewhere <laughs> um god damn it cody <laughs> that Wow, that's questionably legal, isn't it? Um, it didn't actually do anything illegal. It just means that we don't have a real bank account and that PayPal is the closest thing we have. And uh... the terms of PayPal have kind of changed since then that, I mean, you can use it as just a digital holding place, but they're like with a credit card or something. Like, there's no connection. We have no connection to the outside world, which makes it really hard to use the account. I mean, actually, uh, never. It weird financially. It's not illegal, but it is strange. Um. Uh, so yeah, but um, but yeah, it's getting us a a real bank account, mostly so that we don't lose stuff in the PayPal account. Hasn't happened yet, but you know, got to be cautious. Um, and I have been collecting some screenshots of uh, server website themes so that the Night Watch can go through them. Actually, I mean, I'll probably get the chance for the Night Watch to pass through them and, like, ixnay some really bad ones, maybe, but I don't think that'll really be an issue. And then all of the entire server will get a chance to choose and vote on the new server theme for how the general, uh, I, I guess, CSS w layout of the website looks like what color fonts are and the, you know, borders around boxes and that kind of stuff is rather than the gold and black that we have for pretty much everything right now. So. I'm conf I'm confused in explaining right now because 
lay layout could be construed as also like how you know which certain text boxes are where on a page and that's not what i'm talking about i'm just talking about the theme itself like whether it's dark light purple blue, blue rainbow whatever so that's what we're talking about rainbow and sounds that, very lovely though i will just say no this, this is yes. this is not 2004 screw you rainbow's Fuck pretty you. No, no you okay 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 all right Ah, you lose. You didn't say okay. I said all right. I don't know what we're Which doing. Just the same. As, I don't either. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, those are those are things that are gonna happen on the website. So keep your eyes peeled. If you have been ignoring the website because not much has been happening on it lately, you probably want to fix that soon because shit's gonna start happening and you don't want to miss it. And, and if you, you haven't been part the of the website, oh, sorry, you first. Oh no, that's fine too. Uh, okay. Uh, if you haven't been to the website yet, uh, I have that posted on SoundCloud and YouTube in the description. So please join us if you want. We're a very friendly bunch of people. We're just kind of dirty minded, and our Discord is in the description as well. So click that if you want to join us for gaming nights or whatever. Oh, and speaking of joining, that's actually something that it literally popped into my head earlier this week while I was taking a shower. Um, express applications. Instead of having to fill out that uh, big form that, you know, even though half of it is optional, it is intimidating to a lot of people. Um, if you're already a friend of IA, we know your name and, you know, you've hung out with us in game or discord or something before, and you just haven't signed up for the website yet because you're a twat. I mean, I love you dearly. You're not a twat. Why would I say that? I'm, I'm not a mean person. Tro. Um, what? Get on. Move on with it. Okay. Um, then you'll be able to just basically plug in your name. And as long as we actually recognize your name, we can, you know, get you in and approved real fast. That's not implemented yet, but I'm working on it. Rather than having to fill out a bunch of forms like you're applying for a job, because you're not. You still need an engine account, though. Can't help you there. Yeah. Sorry about that. Wait, can't they make um, an engine account on our website? Or would that Yeah, it, it, if you aren't logged into engine, engine kind of like throws in that information on your application. Um, I'm actually working on making a few dummy accounts just so I can go through the application process a few times again because it's been so long. Um, because I think we had problems with a few people that didn't have engine accounts and you have to first verify your email and everything with engine before I ever even get the notification that you applied. And there were some people that were losing the email to verify or didn't realize that they had to do that for engine. And, you know, like, oh, yeah, I applied. And I'm like, well, I don't have an application. And so, yeah, it turned into this big whole confusing mess. So that I'm I'm working on avoiding, but I can't really avoid. I'm basically just going to put a banner saying, please, for the love of God, make an engine account first. It makes it so much simpler. <laughs> It's not hard. It's like pretty much making an account for pretty much anything else. You give an email address and a username and a password, and then you verify the email, and then you go about your life. Yeah. So, anybody on the internet should be able to do it, but, you know, that's including people that shouldn't be on the internet, and that's the problem. Like Speaking elderly things people. things that shouldn't be on the internet. Black Desert Online. Oh, God. So this is the part where someone gets really, really angry with me because I have a good gaming friend that is hardcore into player versus player kind of style. In fact, the name of his guild is in, in Guild Wars 2 was PvP. There are many of those, so don't try to go looking for it. But um, so hardcore into the fighting other players aspect they left Guild Wars, or many of them left Guild Wars 2 uh, after Heart of Thorns came out because at that point, 
World vs. World was in one of its worst states that it's been since the game launched. And basically their play style had been cut from the game. Even though that's not entirely true, it just became incredibly difficult to play that way because of how other things were going on. Regardless, they moved on to other games. And one of them was Black Desert Online, which they apparently have settled on pretty much as their new full-time game instead of something like Guild Wars. And apparently they're loving the crap out of it. And these guys would be shitting all over it if it wasn't even remotely trying to be a player versus player game which is like one of the major complaints that you and I keep hearing is that what was originally a player versus player game is basically having the player part gutted from it and it's now PvE care bearers and if you tried to kill another player there's various penalties and you know the game can't do that and it's like pay to win and all sorts of nonsense and apparently that's not the case question mark i've been told now that uh the player versus player element is totally legit and um you can do it and there's not actually a penalty for it and that the um world mode like realm versus realm kind of an idea is actually like large guilds but it's a really good siege setup and it's even better than the world versus world in guild wars 2 and that um you don't have to pay any real world money at all the only thing you might want is to maybe get a pet which you can sometimes earn in game as a rare chance on stuff the only thing that i think i've heard consistently is that there is some rng in I mean, obviously loot tables and stuff like that, but um, also in character design and whatnot. But it's apparently so minimal in character design that uh, your gear pretty much always overrules it. The, the bottom line I take from this is everything I've been hearing about the game would make it so bad that everything, all of the vitriol and vehemence that we've heard about BDO would be tenfold magnitude greater from these guys that are telling me it's a good game if it was true. At least from their perspective. And they seem to be having a good time. So, I don't know. But, I guess it turns out I might actually be making a free account and checking it out eventually. Or at some point with like a guest pass or something. I don't know. I don't know why I was offered a guest pass because I think it's still supposed to be free. I think it just gets me like extra starting gear or something. I don't know. That's the part the I have to I learn. saw uh, BDO was a pay to play. Is it? Yeah. Maybe. Hmm. If you have a guest pass, then get on that, definitely. So, yeah, I got to learn what the hell's going on first. But yeah, that, that could be interesting. I might end up... <laughs> looking into that and having to recant the fact that I've told other people not to play it. Who knows? But, uh, I got a lot of work to do before I can do that, so. But that was my, uh, my big controversial thing that I mentioned earlier, or at least I think I mentioned earlier. Yeah, I think that, that was. Been, that might have been in the other recording. <laughs> Till now. <laughs> so. Um, I think that exhausts our to-do list today, with one exception of, I know somebody had a pretty super awesome charity stream about falling into TVs. Yes, we did. Yes, I did. Uh, I played Persona 4 for Able Gamers on October 7th and 8th. The results were in. Together, I helped raise $50, so everyone who donated to for my little event, thank you. We raised fifty dollars for Able Gamers, and in total, everyone else who streamed would I wasn't alone, but everyone else who streamed for that of for that particular time frame 
We raised sixteen thousand dollars for Able Gamers total. Woohoo! So thank you guys for helping out, and even if you didn't donate for my event, thank you for donating as anyway. And thank you guys for coming out, and I hope you enjoyed the stream. I hope to do that again kind of soon, but I'll continue that save file if we do another Able Gamer stream. Yeah, how far did you... I didn't re I thought it was like 4 to 8 the first day you did it. It was 4 to midnight and, the first day, right, and then yeah, 4 to midnight the like, next day. So, yeah, you got a lot further in it than I thought you did. Um, and I really didn't get that far. <laughs> yeah, Persona is a huge game, as I've heard. Yeah. It really but, is. Um, now for really long games, you should get into Chrono Trigger. <laughs> oh god. Alright, I've been playing that on streams too, but like I'm having trouble finding places to commentate on. It's hard for well, RPGs. Yeah. The Persona was fun, know. and had a lot of weird antics going on around the place. Yeah, to, Persona's yeah. good for the weird antics. Like eating a... Eating random grass you find in your fridge. That oh, happened. Hi. Okay. But I don't know All why right. that happened, but it happened. And thank you to Raniere for making me eat grass from the fridge. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that was a bet. It wasn't even a bet. It was just like, should I eat this grass that I'm apparently allowed to eat? Yes. And then my stomach revolted, and then I stopped. <laughs> In fact, there's an there's a comic dub on YouTube uh, for Persona 4, and that particular part I think is in part three of the comic dub. It the whole oh thing is just stupid, silly, and I love it. But I think if you don't get the story of Persona 4, watching everything from up to part three is pretty much where I am. So, give that a look if you like. It's very funny. Yosuke just needs to pee all over the place. Yeah, anyway. that was that whole ongoing arc. I'm like, oh my god. Just pee your pants already, dude. <laughs> I thought he would. I'm surprised he held it in for so long. I was actually watching a Whose Line Is It Anyway blooper reel that's like normally not released to TV cut because it doesn't have censoring and it um, actually goes into apparently there's a lot of times where they do and say things that they have to cut out and redo or something because yeah. they the censors said no we can't put this on television even with bleeping or something yeah like Hitler and, jokes yeah Hitler jokes disabled jokes that kind of thing um, so it was one of those things, <laughs> and apparently Ryan Stiles at one point had to really, really pee, and they, there was ongoing jokes from the other guys about that, like they were taking their water cups and pouring them slowly back into the pitcher from, <laughs> like, so it's dribble or whatever, and he's like, you know, squirming in his chair or whatever, and they kept doing skits instead of calling for a break so he could go. And so then they go to the next skit where Ryan um, had to be a waiter with uh, Colin uh, as a patron. And waiter, there, there's a um, problem with my dish. Oh, really? Well, the chef's in the bathroom. Let me go get him for you. <laughs> and Ryan just walks off the stage and goes to the bathroom. <laughs> like, I, I just died. I'm like, oh my god, yes. We actually had a similar style improv troupe that, I mean, it was basically made in the style of Whose Line Is It Anyway at Muskingum University. Um, but unfortunately... After a few of the members graduated that were really good with it, the remaining members were kind of awkward <laughs> with it. And unfortunately, it died out. But it was a really good thing we had running for a while. It was our own personal who's line. So yeah, charity streams. Old Man Henderson, way too much gaming knowledge and to the point of hacking other people's accounts. Um, Which I kind of get behind because Blizzard really fucked up the ARG 
super bad, <laughs> and they need to learn how to. They need to learn from this. They need to fucking That's... get better and not use fucking waiting games for the ARGs. I feel like that's going to echo American politics here for a long time coming. Yeah. Speed up your ARGs or Russia will hack you. Yeah. Thank you, Russia, for that particular hack. I don't want to, like, go into politics and the rest of it. Well, thank you for the DNC hack, too, but... Okay, yeah, that too. Anyways, let's not open that can of worms any further. (laughs) And, um... Let's get out of here before they come yeah. after us with pitchforks and knives. Hello, my darling. Hello, my baby. Hello, my nightingale. <laughs> Send me a kiss by the water. Of the stage. Baby, my heart's on fire. If you refuse me, honey, you'll lose me and you'll be left alone. Oh, baby, telephone and tell me I'm your own. I still know that song. I'm wow. impressed. I didn't know that second verse. It was, hello, my baby, hello, my honey, hello, my ragtime gal. And then all well, that. yeah, I, I heard you sing it. Yeah. <laughs> well, you got the beginning wrong. So, nah. <laughs> we all know at this point that my memory is about as effective as smacking my head with a sledgehammer. So, pretty good at making your skull that. crack. Okay. Yep, yeah, pretty much. Anywho. This has been IA, or Shro and I, anyway. Uh, yeah. <laughs> We're the Insomniac Anonymous, like and we are S-I? going to bed. Yeah. This, some of us. Some no, of no, IA. I... And we are going to bed now. Good night. We don't, we don't actually go to bed. I mean, we go to bed, but we just end up staring at the ceiling for an hour, and then we get up and we play more video games. Well, we play video games at night, but during the days when we sleep, I don't know. That, um, Thought maybe? that was our thing. I mean, we're awake now, but only before the podcast. As soon as this I is mean, insomnia is sleep. really just not being able to sleep. So. Oh, I thought it was, like, uh, inverted. I thought, oh no, that's no, nocturnal. No, that's just being nocturnal. Yeah. Fuck. Which, pro tip from Science Land, diurnal is the opposite of nocturnal. I did not know that. I have to remind myself, like, once every two years, because I forget about it, and then I finally find the word again, and I'm like, oh yeah, that's the word. So that means that I've known that for about a year, so in about a year again, I'll probably forget about it. Well, hopefully you remember in that time frame, because I would like to remember that for years to come. Where's the button? Use so, do you have the button? Um, maybe. Could you I'm press it for me? Could you press that button? I I see no button. There's you not a button. You said you could have a button. I don't I have could. a button, Shro. I don't know. You have to. I mean, if there's a cat, I just see a cat. No button. But you're a cat. Are you telling me really? there's another cat in your box? Does that cat have the button? Ooh, ooh baby. Does that I cat have the button? buddy in here. Is that where all those touchings about at last night? Yes. Yay. This is where you insert the cat sound effect. I, I cat probably cat effect. forgot to do it. Okay. But I'm sorry. Oh, here's the button. <laughs>